Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Constant Agitation, your weekly podcast about photography, among other things, but uh, mostly photography. <laughs> As always, I'm your host Jimmy and joined by Eva. Hey everyone. How you doing? Good. I just realized that uh, when the music starts playing, I just instantly feel happy, like... As soon as the as the riff starts, it's like, oh, it feels good. <laughs> it's go time. Yeah, I think it's a Pavlov's reaction, <laughs> possibly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just noticed something in your frame. What is that thing? Is this, can you push it down a little bit? Sure, I yeah. can try. Yeah. yeah better. <laughs> thank you. Uh, so how is everybody doing? Hey, Devin, thank you for joining us, as always. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, yeah, we, we couldn't make it last night. No. But we're here today. Yes. I almost m didn't make it today either. <laughs> it was, a it's a lot of work. It is. And we have one computer that can do most of the work. So it's a bit complicated. I don't know. Is it? Is, is everything it? all right? No, I'm just checking if it's lagging or not. Oh. We're, we're trying a new camera. Yes. Yeah. My camera is a new camera. Yeah. So, and I think I messed up the white balance on mine. I look like a ghost. <laughs> hey, JB. Hey, Chris. Um, so yeah, let us know if there's any major lag because there shouldn't be. I mean, the camera should not give any lag. By the way, can you guys guess which no, camera is it? But I'm I'm guessing that the computer is lagging because I was I was exporting dangerous amounts of videos <laughs> uh, with uh, I should have restart, but didn't have time. Yeah. Um, Hi, Sham. Uh, so yeah, we had a question. Let's jump into that. Did we have any news? It, uh, there's well, a bunch of news there's a lot of news I guess No, I don't know if they're that interesting but uh, what was the news that I told you we should maybe talk well, about well there's that? two news from Tetanol yeah that um, one yeah uh, they, they released new tablets that for developing black and white mm -hmm. film so basically they're compressed kind of like uh, you know the vitamin C tablets that you put that in the water and they and fizz then, out yeah so basically the same thing but Better don't drink it exactly don't compare them to like I, someone was actually showing them in the discord and i thought like i hope that they put a very big red label on those bottles because it just feels so dangerous it looks to like me supplements that it looks, or yeah exactly it looks like a gym supplement or something right? like that uh, so uh, tablets are, is not a like tablet developer or developer in tablet form is not a new thing it's been around for a while i think they even had colors in the in the past mm -hmm. color developer mm -hmm. Uh, usually they were mostly used by people who are on, on the go yeah mm -hmm. and i think like photojournalists and stuff like that yeah. yeah but i think they also use them for other reasons because apparently they have a really good shelf life yeah of course it's uh, dry it's compressed it's not going to get bad for a really long time so hopefully there's uh, something in the works for c41 as well mm -hmm. fingers crossed i would love some of that or e6 even better E6 would be the dream. Because there's so many bottles. I th <laughs> you know what I think? I think that's the thing that could revive E6 uh, processing. Mm -hmm. Why be do you think so? Because most labs, like for example, the lab that we used to develop mm -hmm. at here, uh, they would usually, you would give them the film and they would say, there is no guarantee when we will give it to you. We'll try to not make it too late. Yeah. But if you're not in a hurry, it's, if it's okay with you, we wait. Because they need to kind of like compile a bunch of films to together be able to be worth it to yeah. make a mm -hmm. run. Um, and I'm assuming that they don't mix a lot of chemicals unless they have a decent uh, run. Yeah, of course. To do it. Not worth um, it. So I'm guessing that if people, you know, if these tablets are more common, people will be Maybe. more prone to to shoot E6 and develop it. I don't know. They're more expensive though, so that's another yeah, thing. Yeah, I was gonna say that it seems like per roll is a little bit more expensive. Yeah, another news from Tetanol, I noticed on Twitter, I th I saw one of their posts, I think they're launching a YouTube channel or something like that. That was Sin Steel? That's the other one. Ah, okay. So there's two <laughs> companies. I don't know about that. Yeah, they, they posted a video on Twitter, Tetanol, talking about, they introduced a new uh, employee or a new member of the team. Uh, he's, a, um, I think, like a younger uh, uh, member of the team. Mm -hmm. And he's going to be responsible for uh, content creation for the for mm -hmm. channel, which is exciting. Uh, and also, Cinestil announced yesterday um, that they are launching their own YouTube channel. It's weird that they didn't have one. I was very surprised, especially because they do some like tutorials and stuff like that. And on Instagram. Yeah, on Instagram. So yeah. for me, the most easy thing would be that it, they would also also have a YouTube channel. So mm -hmm. it's easier than to find, to rewatch, and they can make a little bit of profit and income, I guess, as well. I guess. So uh, it's cool that they hired uh, somebody who's actually a YouTuber, uh, Linus and his camera. Has a oh, YouTube Linus channel. is uh, going to be the yeah. guy, yeah. 
יותר. So cool. I think he's going to be running it. So that's... <laughs> Linus, uh, he's coming. That's, that's the name of... I know, of, that's I know. It's just kind of funny. <laughs> it is kind of funny. He seems sweet. <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, yeah, that's... What else? Is there any other photo news that I'm forgetting? Mm. I don't think so. I mean... Not that are so If relevant, Nico missed a week, then probably nothing is happening. <laughs> You know, hey, he's I was, back this week right? I was I was worried for a second when Nico did not upload a video last week I was like what's going on is he okay you know it's kind of these things that you really are not like connected to those people but they become so much part of your routine that when something misses like you actually notice it um, and of course with the people that you follow on on social media stuff is very noticeable but you can also see that even like if you go take a run every day at the same time and you always cross the same person and then you one day you don't cross them it's like what happened yeah. something yeah, it used to happen in the gym what because i used to work out yeah. a, a, every time every day at the same time mm-hmm. and i would see the same people and then i was like oh i hope they're okay when they don't show right, up right yeah so, <laughs> yeah but it's, it's become a ritual uh, kind of like we finish the show and then we put away the cameras and we go watch nico's photo news and i was like <laughs> last week's like what happened exactly no, um, it's fine there was just not nothing to talk about yeah uh, <laughs> too much cos and curva <laughs> in <laughs> finland <laughs> <laughs> yeah probably i think uh, sa- sauna and uh, <laughs> i don't know what that means i mean i get my swedish kurva not... wouldn't, i don't know i guess let's not get no. into it no maybe not <laughs> um right so we got a question from mm-hmm. uh tropolog um on instagram uh, in my opinion shooting expired film is overrated what are your thoughts on this what are your thoughts eva my thoughts is don't buy expired film for crazy amount of money it's not worth it that's yeah that's very straight to the point i agree <laughs> yeah i mean but here's the thing what if you want to shoot aerochrome aerochrome yeah but that's like that is a specific case because you are not shooting expired film because you are after the spire film you're shooting the spire film because there's nothing else you can do to shoot aerochrome but i think what the, they are mentioning is like more the people that want to shoot expired film as the more expired the better mm-hmm. because that's what they like and and uh, as our friend nick carver would say expired film it's a tool <laughs> 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 it's a tool that you can use creatively but it's a tool that is not a jack of all trades no. it it it, it's not gonna make a photo a good photo just because you shot in inspired film here's what i think uh i'm, I'm more uh, like my approach to it is gonna be more uh practical <laughs> uh do whatever you want you know uh don't overpay for things yeah and uh you know because that just drives the market up and mm-hmm. it, it 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 kind of uh drives more people to poach and uh, poaching is poaching the right poaching uh, no not poaching like driving up the market yeah like flipping yeah it creates yeah. more flippers so like a lot of people now will see like uh, old camera gear without knowing anything about it they will just you know c- buy it for whatever price they can get and put put it online because they know it's a popular thing and so yeah don't overpay for stuff mm. uh, like that and the most important thing is uh, don't get your hopes up because it's expired and you have no idea where it was. Yeah, the quality, the control is uh, null, yeah. zero. I mean, my experience here in Sweden, people are usually honest about their uh, about the ads. I don't think I've ever had any bad experiences with the seller. Mm-hmm. The only time it was weird when we I found a I found a uh, listing for a Super 8 camera, but I looked at it and I was like, this can't be a Super 8 camera. It's a light meter. It's a spot meter. <laughs> And I, was I mean, like, it, okay, this story doesn't have to do with Spire film. Okay, now I hey, know you're going to talk. But I was like, okay, <laughs> I would like a spot meter. And uh, I mean, obviously it was a spot meter. It was, yeah. It's but it was advertised as an 8 millimeter camera. I was a, uh, I don't Soligor. remember. Soligor. Soligor, yeah. And it's like, eh, yeah, well. I, I, was, I was tempted to like send a message to the yeah uh, to, to the, the post, seller, yeah. to the seller to tell them that this is not what it is. But I was also tem- like I was also set that I want to buy it. Yeah. So, so it's like, like maybe if you say that it's this, they will check how much it costs. They will put it. To ma- they won't want to sell it cheaper as well. I mean, it wasn't cheap. I paid like a hundred euros for it or something like that. So I I paid a decent price. Yeah, yeah. I th- it went up in the bidding. What really? I yeah, thought yeah, that yeah. you paid like hundred krona. Did I? Am I adding a zero in my head? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know what happened. 
but I, I, I didn't send the message. I just went with it. I just, you know, yeah, I just kept bidding. But that's the. Only, I think they didn't know. I, I know. They, I know. I think it was a completely honest that they just thought, okay, you put it in your eye. It looks because it has this handle like this, mm -hmm. which it looks like the old uh, Super A cameras. But obviously, they had no clue. And then it was kind of funny because we got it. It's nice. It measures. It meters more or less like our Pentax four meter up and down. It's okay, and then when we had to give the rate to the seller, it's like everything was very well, communication <laughs> perfect, the price was good, anything. But accuracy in the ad, it's like what do we do? We put a zero <laughs> because it was the wrong thing, but I we mean, bought the thing we wanted. I was asking jokingly. I was. I know, but it's. Got, it, I mean, if you think about it, it's like. Yeah, yeah, I know. What do that's you why. Do? I, like, that's why I asked. Because you. if someone would have actually go, wanted it because they thought it was a super a camera, whose fault is it? The person that's buying yeah. that has no idea what they are buying, or the person that's selling. Well, so. they did say in the ad that they have no idea if it works or yeah, not. They were like, true. buy it as is. It just it looks like it's a, it looks like a Super 8 camera, and I don't know uh, if it works or not. Exactly. This yeah, is what they I were have. honest though. So yeah, so they yeah they were honest to their best abilities, I would say. Mm -hmm. But in terms of expired film, usually people tell people tell you it's been frozen, or it, on a cellar, or yeah, they do give you the conditions, or that they had no idea. Or they uh, yeah. yeah. So you have to set your expectations very low with expired film, and. Uh, so what I would say is that if you're not developing at home, if you're sending your photos, to your films to the lab to get developed, it's not cheap. You know, you're paying 10 times the amount that you would pay at home, more or less on average. Mm -hmm. You're paying about 10, 10 times the price between like developing and scanning. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, and it could be nothing. You could get absolutely nothing on that film. But if you're developing at home, yeah, sure. You know, expired film should be cheap. Should you should not spend a lot of money on it. Should mm -hmm. be cheaper than anything else. And you don't, don't pay more for expired yeah, than fresh film. Exactly, yeah. and uh, you should not spend more on the back end as well when it comes to developing and scanning. So, if you have shot a bunch of maybe fresh film, at, at least this is how I do it. If I'm shooting a bunch of uh, f um, a fresh film, I'll shoot one expired with it. Probably. And, you know, maybe for a video, so we're comparing or we're already shooting something else and we're going to, you know, do a, a batch of development. Why not throw an expired one in there? You know, it's not really adding anything to the cost. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, that's, I think that sums up our opinions on expired film. Yep. Um, I like the Soligor spot meter. It's big, but it's not that expensive. Yeah, I liked it too, actually. Uh, I found it to be... Um, the on the so it meters in a strange way. It uh, it has a the one that I have at least. Uh, it has a single button that has two gate two pressure sensitivities. Mm -hmm. So once you click it, it meters um, highlight shadows. No, it meters shadows. Yeah, I think it meters shadows. Oh, okay. uh, so it meters up to seven EV, uh, and if whatever you're metering is above seven EV, you have to click further, and it will go up to I don't know, 13, 14, or something. 18, something like yeah. that. Um, so, um, so uh, it was very accurate comparison to the Pentax spot meter, the digital one, when it was in the uh, in a, in a low intensity setting. Mm -hmm. we, when we tried to meter for the sky, it was always one stop under. Mm -hmm. Although, for the sky, really, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really that matter that much with film. Uh, good morning, Cherie, and good evening, Chronic. Yes, uh, we have people all across the world. <laughs> so nice. So nice to have everybody here from different time zones. Yes. Uh, so yeah, we didn't get any more questions this week. Thank mm. you, Tropolog, for the question. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, we covered the news. Yes. Do you want to jump in to the photographer of the day? I guess, yeah. Anything from our side, where we've been up to? Just work, work, work. We work, did work. some video work. Uh, not for the channel, unfortunately. No. <laughs> no I, uh, but it's nice. It's nice it's to nice be to working be, uh, with videos. Getting, getting but I'm some. upset that I don't have time to edit the videos that we already shot. For the channel. For the channel. Yeah. The yeah. videos are, the photos are already scanned and done. They will come. Th we also have a lot of photos yeah, to scan. I can't, I can't, I was, I was going to turn the screen because I thought I was on my webcam. Uh, but there's a bunch of films five, over there. Five rolls. Five rolls that needs to be scanned. Uh, but yeah, I think that's that's it. I mean, by the end of the podcast, if we think of anything that we really mm -hmm. wanted to mention. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember. Next week, ah, we're going to yeah. announce the winner 
of the competition that's going on on uh, Discord server, Film Photography is Not Dead. Mm -hmm. is one of the three that is linked down below. Um, so this one, this round is over. Yeah, we you close can, on 14th. Yeah, if you're interested in joining, go ahead, click on the link if you already have Discord. If not, maybe download Discord, sign up, and there's uh, three servers down there that are really, really nice. Mm -hmm. um, even for not just analog photography, like uh, you can... Photography in general. Photography uh, in general. However, the one with the contest... Uh, Film. you gotta be active otherwise <laughs> you're kicked out you're kicked out <laughs> today they were removed like really yeah yeah there it was does it every day or so there often. was a cleaning today so <laughs> if you're not active they're gonna do you're always welcome to join back yeah of course it's just that and uh, I, it, it's a bi-monthly contest yeah hopefully if the winner is up for it w they're gonna join us next week on the show that'd be great yeah. they can get their thoughts on the photo i mean i know which photo i like i, yeah. I have to tell tim I, I, I picked mine. I'm still waiting to talk to you what about What do we pick. do if we don't have the same one? We flip a coin or we ask no. the, the we ask the admins of we, the server. We try to flip each other's. Oh. Uh, no? We can, can I think we already like the same one. I'm pretty sure <laughs> we like the same one. Because the one that I like is kind of your taste. Oh, yeah. interesting. So, then I think I know what you want it is. Yeah, but the cool thing is it's anonymous. So we don't yeah, even, we don't know we who, don't know who's, who posted what. They made a bot on the server. Mm -hmm. So whenever you submit a photo, the bot automatically deletes it, hides it, and copies it and um, reposts, reposts it uh, as the bot. So only the admins, only, you know, Tim. And they know who posted it. They know who posted it. We have no ideas. That's why we're impartial. Which is cool. I really like it that it's like that. Actually, talking about contests, I maybe can say that I'm really happy that I'm going to be also jury of a photo contest back in my village. Oh, nice. That my mom kind of hooked me up there and that's <laughs> right. Like, uh, they, it's very nice that it's like a new uh, neighbors association yeah. and they are doing a lot of cultural stuff and a lot of like artistic things like making soaps, painting and stuff. And one of the things they have in this cultural week is a photo contest, like a mobile photo contest. So either phone or tablet. And the, th the theme is La Cebeda uh, Siglo XXI, which is the La Cebeda 21st century. That's the topic. And what is La Cebeda? That's my village. Oh, that's an area. Do I don't know. <laughs> it means Hollywood. All right. Actually, yes, because Acevedo is the holy tree. So La Cebeda is the forest of holy trees. So Hollywood. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I always say this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to be um, the jury and it's going to be super express because apparently they finish at 12 at night on Saturday and on Sunday they have to say who wins. Ooh. So they are going to send all the photos and I don't know what to expect. I don't know if it's anonymous or anything, but uh, you'll Exciting help me out, stuff. I guess. I will. Help. I would gladly help you out. <laughs> all right, let's talk about Gary. How about this? Let's talk about Gary because there's a lot to talk about Gary. <laughs> right. Let's get into it. Yeah. I'm so. pretty sure that the majority of the people here uh, looking at us they know about him or have heard about him mm -hmm. because he is a very very influential and very important street photographer of the 20th century and you all know that we love street photography right? for sure <laughs> the other day i was like jimmy what do you want to do for the podcast what kind of photography i said are you up for some street photography he's like of course always <laughs> <laughs> that's not how that's i talk kind of, i don't know how to do <laughs> impressions you know that <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, I, without even knowing who it was, I'm down. I love street photography. And there was, so we watched the documentary mm -hmm. about uh, Gary and there was so many quotes that I wanted to kind of clip, yeah. but I didn't. I'm sorry. So go watch the documentary. <laughs> yeah, it's called Everything is Photographable. Yeah, I, I think. think. It's really nice. It has the philosophy of, of because I get in, I, you, I think if you've been watching the show for a while, you know how heated, uh, and intense I get when it comes to street photography. <laughs> like I defend it with everything, and uh, and is th I I think Gary, even though his style or m the the majority the big the bigger body of his work is not necessarily what I like the most, mm -hmm. but I appreciate what he's doing and I appreciate him going out and doing what he did for for all of this time. I mean mm -hmm. he was. I mean, he's so influential. I wasn't so familiar with his work, but looking at his work and the time that it was done in, and now I've seen so many people 
that I've, that kind of came after yeah. came after and did the same thing like that 28 millimeter street photo mm-hmm. uh, we've seen a lot of greats as well who did the same style i mean now that i'm thinking about some of the color work by joel Me- uh, meyerowitz jo- joel i think joel, joel is the joel. way to say it. joel meyerowitz um is kind of reminiscent of uh gary mm-hmm. winograd grand uh work uh, and uh, he did a lot of different things and he did a lot of controversial stuff as well mm-hmm. and so, above all he was a person that lived and he was obsessed with photography like absolutely for he is photography as much as photography was him you know like the, you could it's like linos and his camera that was like it's it's gary and his photography because I, for what i could get from the documentary or what i could read online that's what he was and what he wanted to do all I mean, the time the guy basically photographed every day can we say can we start saying numbers yeah let's go in his lifetime which wasn't unfortunately very long because he passed being six, uh, 56 he took a million photographs they estimate that he has a million negatives and slides that's crazy a million and he didn't get to see a quarter of that million of photographs because in the later years of his life he didn't actually develop or or even de- made, made prints only maybe developed a 250,000 photographs that's insane <laughs> i mean I, I like numbers but this is so far of the people that we have talked and we have studied and we have researched i think he is the most prolific and i'm not gonna say like successfully prolific because he even himself said a lot of the things i do don't make it a lot of the things i do uh, or i make are not good enough but to get those ones that were so so important and so great he was out there every day shooting every day it's unbelievable and it's unbelievable but with this amount of work how much how much how how similar and different at the same time his work can yeah, be can mm-hmm. be right it's it's he went through so many different phases and i'm trying to find good examples as i go so like this for example these photos that we're looking at these are the typical new york city street photos you know when when somebody says street photography this is what you have in mind yeah i think this is one of the first thing that pops in at least in my head and in a lot of people's head yeah. you know it's like this wide probably a leica going in the, in the, in new york and there's again there's a bunch of photographers that did it some of them were famous for being super annoying and they go in people's faces with a with a big flash Mm -hmm. i think in in one discord we were talking about it the other day Mm -hmm. um and somebody was like ripping on street photography because it's like this is their idea of street photography it's like well being a paparazzi type of thing yeah yeah um but he also like so for example this is a good example of gary uh taking photos during big events Mm -hmm. of like not what you think the photo should be yeah um the tilted angles a lot of people say we talked about robert robert frank a few weeks ago and um, gary was directly influenced by his book um, the The americans Americans. Mm -hmm. although the only difference is that uh, frank wasn't american gary was deeply american (laughs) yeah so it's nice to see the kind of contrast between their work I think uh, the documentary is also very nice because you get accounts of his life by himself. There's a lot of recordings of him talking and then mm. of his impressions. And even though apparently he didn't leave a lot of uh, written records of his thoughts about photography or the work he was doing, he left some clips here and there, some interviews, some lectures, and you really get to to l- learn from him directly about his work, which is... He was such a... I mean, I really liked his something about his character you know like usually artists and even like most of the people who were most like in the documentary most of the other artists that showed up yeah they want they're so composed yeah and they he talk was like, like so calmly and, but gary is is like a fireball you know yeah, he's he like is. so explosive so loud he's like somebody that you want to you know good energy i, I don't that's know what meet I on the least. street and yeah. talk yeah he has some really good energy something that I like. At least on the excerpts that we were able to to listen and yeah. stuff. Because he also went through darker parts of his life and he has some issues. So, of, of course, course, people change. But this, this, like, energy of, like, 
almost not being apologetic. This is what I do. This is what it means. And when he talks about what photography meant to him and that everything can be photographable and, uh, you know, all these thoughts that he had is like, you cannot come here and tell me I'm wrong. This is this is it. You know, that's kind of the feeling. <laughs> right. Uh, I wanted to mention something about one of the photos that already passed. I, I, it was a really good example of like how he kind of started this trend of like, um, you know, for, so, uh, there's obviously something happening there. Mm -hmm. I think it's a rocket launch. That's the That's JFK Space, Space Center. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It says NASA over there. But you know you can't see the, the rocket 11 moonshot yeah yeah so you can't see the rocket you can see the fumes or the cloud whatever it's called uh but <laughs> the photo is just about these the people that are over there yeah and he has so many of those i think he might have a like a small book or a big collection of those um and so many of these um yeah there was a book that is called public relations public relations yeah. that's the one thank that you it's, uh, it's about all these things events and things that are happening but just what is kind of behind those events and being this part is of one them, of them yeah. as well this photo is one of them you can see other photographers photographing and actually it was cool because uh you you know i studied one particular photograph from the beginning of the 19th century of the 18th 19th 20th century so 1912 which is the first photo of that kind of photography which is a group of people that are looking at the clips in france and you so you only infer what's happening by the photo that is taken of those people immersed in in the experience so i see a lot of that in the photos that gary started taking of these events and people at the event as well so i think he was also probably inspired by it yeah, and I, to the point that we were talking about earlier, what I really liked about him is the change. So, like, they, because a lot of photographers who do this uh, street photography kind of thing with, like, the New York typical type of street photography with the 28 and every, so many things, things happening, happening in the frame, mm -hmm. something happening over there and something else unrelated happening over there. He also took a lot of shots, like this one, for example, where he used negative space. Mm -hmm. And a, uh, this one also features the like the uh a little bit tilted a little bit casual type of photograph mm -hmm. i mean i read a lot that people were saying that he didn't mind composition but i think that f to me at least rather that he didn't mind composition he had the perfect skill of getting the right composition in the right moment I don't think he just did it. at least of the photos that we see. Obviously, there's a million photos. There's a lot we are not seeing, obviously. But the ones that made it, is it is it a chance of you are shooting so much that, that some are actually going to be such a great masterpiece in composition? Or is it that he really knew exactly when to take the photo, you know? Because they were saying, a lot of, of the historians of his work, they say he, he just never thought about composition. He just put his camera up, did like he, he was taking a photo and then shot whatever it was in front of him. But I don't really buy that 100%. Here's the thing, though. Okay, so let's say he did that. But then he had to find those photos and mm -hmm. he had to make the selection. So yeah, he obviously was, knew what he was doing. That's the thing. When he passed away, he mm -hmm. left so many roles that are unprinted without so unprinted i mean with no contact prints so i have the numbers so I he think. developed these roles didn't do any contact prints and for a photographer at that time not making a contact contact prints it means he has no record of his opinions about the photos, photos. so yeah. he's he doesn't even um we don't even know what he thought of any of these photos yeah they're just negatives they're just negatives and there's a bunch of other roles that he didn't even develop yeah so they were so 2500 roles undeveloped, undeveloped completely in their canisters and 4000 of roles processed but not printed or contact printed crazy so we have no idea what he thought what or he yeah. thought mm -hmm. or yeah anything about those roles now what they did towards the end after he passed away they d wanted to um uh Put like a do a retrospective do a retrospective work, yeah. uh, in um, in MoMA mm -hmm. wasn't it yeah and so what they did is that they went took everything he shot and d didn't publish developed and contact printed everything crazy amount of work everything right uh -huh. and uh, by the way there's a reason why he didn't do any of that developing and printing because 
Towards the end of his life, he moved, he left New York and moved to the south between Austin and uh, L.A. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that move, he lost access to personal darkroom. Yeah. So that he he didn't have the means to to take care of to that take care well, of yeah. that as easy as it was in New York. And the community wasn't the same back back then. I don't know about now uh, in those areas mm -hmm. in comparison to New York. So what ended up happening is that when after he passed away and they got all of these negatives, right, and they developed them and they did the contact prints, they uh, showed the work to what's his name? The, the guy with the Swiss name. Uh, what's his name? The the guy who was uh, the Charovsky guy. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. It's not Charovsky, Char but Char something. Charkovsky. I think it's Charkovsky. Yeah, um, I think so. He was the director of photography at MoMA. Basically. Okay, so by, by that time, and he was a very very good friend with Gary, and he had curated his early shows at MoMA, and then later shows as well. We we're going to talk about that as well because yeah. it was a very interesting trio that were curated together. Yeah, with the new document uh, show. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but towards the end, when, uh, what was it again, his name? It's Charkovsky. Three, three, three. All right. Sorry about that. I, I will look for it. Don't worry. I'll, okay. I'll look for it. Maybe someone in the chat can help us. But he, no, was, he was so upset that yeah. when he saw the work, and then one of the editors or and one of Gary's close friends looked at the photos and was like John Sarkowski. Sarkowski. Okay. okay, so John was very upset and he was disappointed with the work. But the problem is that they eat, so you, you know when you load up you load up a camera, you take a bunch of shots mm -hmm. to get to the first frame so you don't get any light leaks on the first few frames. So they even printed those. They printed they everything. They printed everything. Because they were like, we're not going to leave anything out. Yeah. So the, it, it really matters when it comes to selecting your photos and editing your photos and printing your photos. And back in the day, we all know that printing and editing was were, were one in, two in one, basically. Yeah. It's not, you're not just making a print. You're actually doing the darkroom work that is giving you the final print. Mm -hmm. So imagine, you know, like, so, like I pass away and now somebody takes all my raw photos and they're like, he lost his touch with color. Hey, <laughs> these are raw photos. They're not even color corrected. <laughs> what are you talking touch about? With color. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I think, uh, yeah, I think there is nothing wrong with shooting the way he did. Uh, it was a, a funny comment in the in the documentary. Somebody described his style as, or described him as the first digital shooter. <laughs> That's true, actually. I right? also found it pretty interesting. Because he didn't really think for the like economy of film, sort of speak. That is just you know it costs film. He just shot and shot. And someone actually in one of the Serbs talking and saying, "How much? How many rolls do you shoot a year?" He's like about six hundred. Yeah, six hundred rolls a year. That is literally every day at least two to three rolls. Not that bad, right? No, I mean if you think about it, if you're going out and shooting every day, that's all you do, and you live in a, such a like a busy area, yeah. busy area like you know in new york you're easily gonna go through that much you know what i mean i mean you know how i am on for example i'm not comparing myself to gary but i i, I don't really care if it's film if i see it if i'm on the street i know it's not gonna happen again so i'm gonna take it mm -hmm. you know and it's like boom 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 uh, and you know you expect nothing less of one of the greatest street photographers you know so mm -hmm. th it's not surprising that he shot three so rolls a day yeah. you know and here we see a photo of Diane Arbus. Yes. So this could be a good segue to the uh, new document. Yeah, new documents. What do you want to tell, tell us uh, about? Well, th this was actually um, the way that documentary photography worked up to the 60s where these photos were taken. It, it was pretty much, um, in a sense, commercial work for what I understood of the course I'm taking. It was mostly... Um, commissioned by government for example to go and and understand what's happening with the people in an ethnographic kind of approach but within the country so for example the uh, the agricultural administration or something like that will send a photographer to see how people going through drought droughts are, are living through so that was kind of like the documentary photography so it was commissioned a lot of people were thinking that it's a little bit biased even you know because they are documenting whatever they want to document and maybe and also the biases 
experience of the photographers taking the photos. So we still have not talked about Dorothea Lange, which is one of the mo first and most known documentary photographers in the US. I hope that we talk about her sometime. But that was kind of like what documentary photography was up to then in 20s, 30s, 40s. And then here comes a group of photographers, a group of artists, new people that they don't really uh, see photography in that way. And you can call the street them fo street photographers mm -hmm. or you can call the documentary photographers because they are documenting what's happening around them. And uh, New Documents was um, curated by John Strakowski and he wanted to bring together people that were documenting life in ways that we haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. That's why it's called New Documents. And he put together uh, a guy called Lee, what was it? Well, we're going to talk about him at some point. It sounded really like, cool. a, like a, a Swedish last name. Lee Friedlander, mm -hmm. Lee Friedlander, Diane Arbus, and Gary Winora together, which have very different styles of mm -hmm. photography among themselves. You know, Diane Arbus, we already talked about her. She really was making very uh, private and personal photography. Portraits. Portraits and getting really connecting with their subjects. Thing that is completely opposite to what Gary was doing with his subjects because there is no really relationship between them. He's just their part of the environment, mm -hmm. part of the wild, so to speak, and taking the photo. It's very candid. It's very candid. It's just like there are, it happens it's a moment like he was saying remember there was a quote or he was talking about that someone asked him in your photography there's a lot of movement and he's like what do you mean my photographers are still photographed <laughs> they are capturing this moment in time it's like <laughs> i think <laughs> Sassy I, th Gary. <laughs> I think he had a knack for like just being a um, what is the word for it um you know opposite to whatever you say yeah, yeah right from the interviews we saw is like he's always you say something, it's like, no, it's the opposite. Yeah. Even if he has to contradict himself, I think he just loved it. <laughs> and and then the uh, Lee Friedhammer, Fried, 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 Fried we still have not talked about him, so I cannot really say much about his photography. But apparently these three photographers were radically different, but they mm. were brought together with this idea that documentary photography doesn't have to be just that thing that we knew. And documenting the world around us can take different forms and uh, Gary was one of them as well I think um, I think there's a I think that that um, putting these three photographers together makes a lot of sense and it's it makes it so interesting to see mm -hmm. because from what I've seen of okay I need to I need to look up the name let me give me a second what's his name Lee Fried Lande is it E L E Fried? E Fried? Uh, the Lee I'm still at Lee L E, yeah, e. Lee and then F? Fried. Fried? Like Fried Lander. Yeah. Okay, let's look at this. But from I want to talk about him more. Yeah, so. well, I was just going to take a quick look. From what I've seen, his photos are like, the few photos that I've seen are kind of, yeah, they're m much more thought through in a way. Mm -hmm. Like f this one, for example. This one, for he's more um, concerned with composition. Mm -hmm. Kind of like with the mirror here, we see like, with the f multiple framing within a frame, shadow play. It's kind of like, kind of, uh, what's her name? Uh, Viv uh, Vivian Mayer yeah. uh, type of stuff, which is, you know, there's some thought into making the photo beautiful. Mm -hmm. But even though there is not necessarily, it's not a portrait, it's not something, it's not something that you typically think of being beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he can, he makes the, what is around the mundane beautiful. Yeah. beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then Gary, on the other hand, has absolutely no regard to anything of It's beauty. like chaos. It's a bit it's, of chaos. It's chaos. Like his photos are, uh, there was someone saying his photos are on the verge of falling apart. And I think that was such a beautiful description of some of his photos. They feel chaotic. They feel like something is about just to go. I mean, look at this yeah. one. Hit the fan, <laughs> you know, like uh, this one is really it's cool. It's crazy. Actually. And it makes, to be honest, I don't usually like the, I mean, I'm like, why did you just fix the tilt? But this one, I just love it so much with the tilt. I, mean, I don't think I'm going to love it as much if it wasn't do, tilted. Do you remember? I wish we had... I mean, I don't think we are allowed to show a clip from a video that is on YouTube and you had to rent. But do you remember that clip of like... Oh, how he uses the camera? Yeah, like it's like watching an animal in the wild, so to speak. Like it was someone taking an uh, 8 millimeter video of him 
actually taking a photo mm -hmm. in such a way that is like, I don't see how his photos could be any other way than what we're seeing, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you see him like just taking the camera and kind of like doing this and then it. like playing and then looking and then doing like this. The majority of the people around him wouldn't even like know if he actually took a photo. I don't think he took time to be in front of the camera like that. He would just see what's around him. Yeah, like mm -mm, now he mm -hmm. wouldn't change settings in the moment. Like he would just like be ready to shoot. Yeah, and probably like so he's using a 28 millimeter probably closed down. Yeah. Uh, with so the, he can focus a lot. So yeah. he can get everything in focus. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but this is like a very common technique nowadays. Even back in the day, like I'm assuming uh, post Gary. Mm -hmm. Again, I could be completely wrong. I have a feeling like I've talked about or I've read about somebody who had the same style before. But it could be like my, my mind doesn't keep chronological mm -hmm. order very well. I we should make a, a I, whiteboard here. With it. Yes, I know that uh, we're going to end up like, what's his name from uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia? <laughs> the the meme with the guy with the lines and everything. Yeah. Uh, so, um, uh, yeah, I was, what was I saying? So I know uh, Joel Meiro is also kind of did it in mm -hmm. the same way. I know a bunch of young photographers. I mean, that's now a way to do it do if it. you want to do something quickly. Actually, to be honest, watching the documentary, watching these photos from Gary, I really want to get a 28 millimeter in my camera and just like go out and do it. Do it just like he did it and see what I can get just because I kind of want, not just because of the photos I might take, but because I want to experience being the photographer in that situation. Mm -hmm. I want to be out. I want to have my camera have 28 millimeter and just shooting everything that's in front of me. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, it's a really fun way to shoot, especially if you think about, like you can do a lot of things, just being mindful of your, where you where you are standing. Yeah, we're, we're especially aware. <laughs> yeah, and, and then you can also play a lot with the, uh, uh, um, what is it called now? Um, the vanishing points. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the converging lines, mm -hmm. they play a big role and really all you need to do is have a nice angle, have something interesting and just point the camera and shoot. Yeah. That's the ultimate point of shoot. But again, if you want to get like really up close and personal with people and like hide the fact that you're taking a photo, the Leica really helps because it's super silent. Yeah, it's so dynamic silent. Yeah. I mean, yeah, with F3, we wouldn't be able to be so sneaky. <laughs> I have a setup for you if you want to try. I mean, I I have a Sorky. I have a nicer setup for Which you if one? you want to try. You can take the Olympus EM10. Oh, it's yeah. so tiny. It has yeah. a silent shutter. Yeah. And I have a, I think I have a 12 millimeter lens for it, which is equivalent to 24. Mm -hmm. Are you up for the challenge? For sure. No, that's, here's a video idea. <laughs> we don't have to develop for that one. We could just put it out. <laughs> um, but yeah. So Gary did a lot of work, but he also did a, did some uh, controver controversial, controversial is the word? Controversial work. work? As well. Um, he did, um, uh, he did, even though like we were saying, a lot of his photos were chaotic and uh, it's just capturing whatever is in front of him, but he did have uh, a lot of th reoccurring themes as well. Yeah definitely so i don't know did you set up any uh did you find any collections uh the, i the, did you already go through the collections that no i didn't from the website uh, this is the portfolio one yeah those are the all right so w there are not so many in each one of them but there are some representative ones okay so let's let's talk so about in this the streets one, these are these are mostly and you can pass f that side and you're gonna get more photos this was one of the <laughs> most controversial uh photos yeah he uh, he took uh, as a single photo because there's more yeah. controversial body of work but this one was controversial because there's an interracial couple which was a recurring theme in his work definitely and he really liked to photograph uh, uh interracial couples uh, but this they one were a new thing back then kind of yeah and these th this couple right here uh they're holding uh, two monkeys and it was like taken the wrong way as a two dress monkeys yeah uh <laughs> as like a statement or a racist a racist statement or whatever but apparently he just thought of it as being funny yeah that more like a joke it's like a joke it's not it, there it's not about the uh racist uh, implications of the image rather mm -hmm. than look at this beautiful couple yeah. That is walking around so seriously. So dressed nice uh, dressed so nicely. 
and they have their kids with them and they're so dressed and they're also serious about it but the kids are not kids they're monkeys they're chimpanzees right? yeah for me it's a it's a it's a photo with a lot of humor in i it. really like it yeah um but you know things can always be taken out of context and i don't think that the yeah, Gary really, really took himself that seriously <laughs> and there's a photo of this photo yeah by the way of him, of him taking, taking this photo. photo i think it's a minute after or second after yeah and you can see all of them are laughing yeah everybody in the uh, so it's, i i don't know what was going on why they were holding the monkeys why are they all dressed up but it's just it's a lot of good time uh there's there was a lot of monkeys in the photos that we've seen also yeah go to the one before i just want to mention like you know just pay attention uh, to the rhythm yeah like how it's so harmonic like it just works so well together sometimes i feel like it's a flex like the photo is so good i don't even need to make it straight <laughs> right you know <laughs> <laughs> you know it's like it's yeah I no get it. but i think it also i mean when i'm outside or when we are outside we're walking it's do so you good. actually experience the world as a straight horizon or do you actually experience it as a as a as a dynamic thing that changes orientation because for me it's not a, a straight at least how i experience the world around me hmm. so to be honest this kind of photographs for me this makes me feel more like i'm there it depends like i i can experience it as not straight when i'm making images because you know i love to kind of isolate yeah. things and can't, you lose orientation completely in in what the photo is mm -hmm. i don't do it all the time but it's one of the things that i like to do mm -hmm. i shoot photos in my head that are going to be upside down mm -hmm. or a very extreme dutch angle or whatever but i don't see the world like i don't tilt like this like the world that the way that i walk is kind of like the gopro cameras with the auto horizon thingy yeah so it doesn't matter hey, how it's you're looking it's, it's always you always have a reference point mm -hmm. to to where the horizon is and it always it Sorry, I was blocking your camera. <laughs> and it's always a horizon. Like, it's always leveled. Mm -hmm. It's just like I'm shifting my gaze around, but it's always leveled. I don't know. Like, somehow, for me, as I move through the world, these kind of instances and moments, they are recorded in my, in my mind, in my memory like this. Yeah. I mean, this one, it kind of like shifts the weight because of the tilt. It throws the weight to what's going on here. There's a dog making a poo-poo <laughs> yeah. uh, behind these trash bags. So it kind of like makes your gaze fall there. Yeah. But I don't know if it was done on purpose. I don't I don't know what's the point of the tilt, to be honest with you. I, I, I think there's no more point I'm, I'm that this is that, that when he just puts the camera up, that's what's happening. Yeah, but I think like if, if I'm walking straight and I turn like this to look down at the doggo, the world is gonna shift and tilt in in, yeah. in that way but i don't know maybe we're looking too much into it this photo however is so cool this photo is really cool uh, because of all the all the light play that is happening all the contrast i mean this person here is like falling directly on the on the shadow line mm -hmm. and there's so much going on there's this kid here over checking out the guy over there yeah and these three women kind of come in with the backlight it's really nice it's really also like very very nice exposure it is really <laughs> good whatever how it was printed it was printed very nicely there is definitely some uh, darkroom play at hand here i mean these these ladies for example are completely backlit but you can still gather some uh, some detail yeah. in the shadow even the guy in the ch chair and yeah. the windows by the by the shop also it's so cool he was uh, there's a lot of photographs of people just passing by coming by where either nobody is noticing that he's taking photographs or one or two of the subjects are noticing it um i really enjoy looking at these photographs like how we have talked before about street photography like this is the safari of the city yeah this is the safari of the city. This is what you see around. This is... I mean, look at this one. Yeah. I mean, this one, you had to be like, boom. Uh, I'm knowing it's a 28. It's, it's so close. Right? <laughs> yeah. Like, so crazy. And he he had a lot of this uh, kind of... Even in this, uh, some of the footage that we saw, we wish we can share them with you. 
Uh, we really recommend you watch the documentary. It's on YouTube, but it's you have to rent it. I don't know if you can probably find it somewhere else. If you no, want. you can't. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, what was it? What was I saying? I forgot. About the, like you wanted to say that when he was taking the Super 8s of people. Yeah, yeah. so he would take Super 8s, uh, these, they showed this uh, film, like a motion picture footage that he shot. They're almost creepy, you know? They are interesting. They're very interesting because he would focus, he would hone in on one person. Eating just, most yeah, of the time. A lot of, a lot of people eating. A sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> But there was one that was, I, I it's really stuck in my head, which was like this, like, mobster looking new york guy that's the first of the first of the clips yeah and uh, no it's actually towards the end oh towards the end okay. yeah it's almost because the first one also looked like mob mob like the first one i remember was the cook i know okay no yeah, yeah no i was thinking so he he's basically standing on the sidewalk and right next to him is a mobster guy and he seems like to have a goon with him yeah, yeah. and he's like What is this idiot doing? <laughs> I ah, do yeah, an yeah, Italian yeah. accent, but he 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 was so shocked that this that Gary was just like pointing a camera at him and he's not budging, and he looks at his goon basically is like, is this guy for real? <laughs> and he looks at him again is like, what? His his body language is yeah. so, it's like it's right out of a Scorsese movie. That but it's not real. A, it's, it's real. real. It's not acted, and it was one of my favorite things that I've seen in a while like yeah. the best short clip i've ever seen <laughs> that guy so watch the movie the, the documentary for the sake of that tiny clip it's like five seconds <laughs> so good though now this is the end of this uh yeah collection. so that, that photo was also kind of uh, important in his it was a very appreciated photo because of uh, what they call the dance yes yeah. that's something we haven't talked about no that is how how much I, I don't know how to call it synchronicity there are in his photos. I think it's 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 um the chaos with the rhythm. Yeah. So like when you talk about classic photographers, um and one of the like the classic ways of doing photography or the classic composition styles, mm -hmm. rhythm always pops up. We talked about it on the show before. It's really beautiful. Uh it's really subtle. But it's really powerful at the same time. Yeah, it's like you might not understand why a photo works, why I like this so much. And then yeah. it's because you find there is so some for sort example, of rhythm. Here, this is a perfect example for rhythm. You have two people almost exiting the frame on the, on the corners. And then you have two adults and two kids. And they're kind of like, it's you see, it's a rhythm. Mm -hmm. You know, like you can take this and it's sample it. It's a pattern, it. yeah. It's a pattern. And you can, like, if you take the shape and you draw it in a music app, It will make rhythm basically. So yeah, it's his photos is like a dance that you are seeing. In and front this of you is and the this one is you the were talking yeah. about. So, um, which is also like these people interacting with each other in particular ways. This couple, this couple, this couple. It almost looks theatrical, like yeah. when there's a lot of actors on the scene, mm -hmm. and there's a bunch of things happening. Maybe during a dance in the theater, you see a lot of people doing their thing in, in this corner, musical, some yeah. in the center stage, and some in the background over there. So. I think that's what they mean by the dance when mm -hmm. they describe his photos because it's the, it's the rhythm but it's up close and personal and sometimes it's too cha chaotic to see. Yeah. Uh so I really like that and like all the all the people back there. It's really nice. I really like digging deep in these photos. Mm -hmm. Uh this is uh the one we mentioned earlier public, public relations. relations. <laughs> just like i mean most photographers will probably take the photo even like some like this you know crop everything i can't zoom in further but maybe like this try to hide the cable something like that you know this is what you would do um but no gary <laughs> wants to show you everything all the cables and <laughs> the recorders down there you can see the vignette of that 28 um yeah and uh, is it that diane arbus Is it? Could be. Yeah, look at her with the 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 big flash that she normally had. I think it's her. Could be her. Hard to say. I'm familiar with her photos more than her face. <laughs> Oof. Oi, oi, oi. This one is the one we saw. Yeah, this this is the typical photo. I just like I love it. I really like this. Like these are all the all the people either protesting or the journalists around and. I think Bresson did a lot of did, did a lot with this mm -hmm. when he fills the frame with people heads or bodies of humans. Mm -hmm. 
it's just it's different when Gary does it because he's using a much wider lens. Like Bresson usually was using 50. something like a fifty, um, which is going to be easier to fill <laughs> the frame with mm -hmm. with the same subject. But it's so cool, and I've, we've seen a bunch of those before. So I'm going to jump into um, another collection. Uh, the animals. This one was very interesting. Yeah. Because of the the story behind it. I agree. I really, really like. Like I kind and this of. This is actually was his first book. No. The animals was his first book. No, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. That can't be true. That is true. Okay, we will find out. Stay tuned. <laughs> I'll go look for it. Because if it is his first book, the story that I'm attached to it in my head doesn't make sense. Uh sixty nine. The animals. Yeah. 75 women are beautiful 77 public relations and that was it did he already move in 69 no he divorced the first wife but oh. he still lived in new york for a long time all right because the story as i remember it uh the the critique basically that he got he's just going to the zoo taking photos of these animals and people interacting with them uh, but uh, there was like a close friend of his who kind of pointed out that he was um, spending time with his daughter. Yeah, my, with his son and daughter the so from the first marriage. Yeah, yeah, and the the kind of the real theme of of this book is a single dad. Yeah, or with his kids, <laughs> like a divorced dad. <laughs> a divorced dad, and I thought that's a very that's a very unique backdrop of a piece of work yeah, right? your work, yeah. it's just to to think about like yeah that's but i think the photographs are beautiful like even though he apparently he wasn't that happy with them either but just he thought they made a good collection but he wasn't like over the moon with those photos i think some of them are really cool and also this like for example that one that one is so cool you guys might not see it because it's a bit dark but there is a huge walrus that is looking directly into the camera even in a comical way and then you have these three people that are looking at the walrus while the walrus is just not paying attention to them <laughs> whatsoever. So there is so much That's a family. irony That's in that. That's a father, mother, yeah, and a son. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think some of them are beautiful. There's also a lot of like uh, play, interplay moments of the kids going around. So it's a mix of, of like a family time, but also an artistic vision of what's happening around. There, uh, in a documentary, they also showed us a lot of, uh, like, when they revealed the uh, the the truth behind kind of how this project came to mm -hmm. be, they showed us a lot of photos of of his, you know, of his kid as well, of his daughter, because you know they were together, and uh, he would have her on his shoulders. That was actually for the la later part of his life. He had two kids in the sixties with a wife, and then the one that you're talking about is the it's the the one that she he had later in time and then she was seven when he passed away that's uh, that's from his first marriage i think no that's from the second marriage baby i would i know all the gossip but where is where is that collection <laughs> that that is not a collection because those are from the after he passed away but those photos were so cool i know but there's like uh, here it's only about the books that he published the photos are so cool when when basically he was going around photographing yeah. with his daughter I sitting on those, his shoulders. I don't think those made it to the internet yet. They had only been in the retrospective if it has happened. Okay. Yeah. So cool, the photos. And he took, a, I think one of them stands out to me where somebody is reaching out their hand mm -hmm. and you see an elephant trunk. That's also from the animals one. But see, that's from you're the confusing the no, timeline. No, let's no, no, not no, let's no. not get into this. <laughs> okay. Okay. There is no way to make. Actually, if you uh, if, if you put the animals Gary on on Google, we mm -hmm. can find that that photo. All right. And it's from sixty nine. The animals. Gary. All right. Let's see. Let's see who's right. Yeah, I mean, but that's the thing. That that's the photo. This is the photo I'm talking about. That's from the animals. That's from New York time. No, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't think so. Yes, it is. Anyways, let's let's uh, let's agree to disagree. It's a common theme on the show lately. <laughs> so uh, let's go back here. Where were we? So he also did another controversial piece of work. Yep. Uh, which is called "Women Are, Are Beautiful." Beautiful. 
This one might be a risky one to flip There's through. There's only on one known for safe for work, I think. I, mean, I think we easy. already crossed that line. So, <laughs> um, what do you want to tell us about this work? This work was not well received. It was not well received at all because of when it was actually published. He decided to publish in the mid seventies, which is kind of like the the time for the revolution and the up up showing of feminism in in the U.S. And his book was basically a collection of photos that he did all till that moment where he just photographed women that he found beautiful around. And I there's a, like a quote that it was kind of interesting. It's like, I don't know if all the women in my photographs are beautiful, but I know that photographs make all the m women beautiful. So, so to speak, like that he cannot really say that they were beautiful, but just photographing them makes them beautiful. Um so he he got a lot of backlash especially from you know feminist and female artists and actually i think he i read somewhere that he wanted to put a subtitle to the book that was something like the views of a chauvinist uh, man pig or something like that <laughs> like kind of like kind of this this closing you know this is just my view of the women around the world other people were saying look the revolution of how women were dressing, how women were presenting themselves in the streets was changing. It was part of their life, part of what was happening around. And he just photographed it. Like, he photographed many other things. I agree. So there is no point of saying, you know, he's a pig, he's doing this just because he wants to take advantage of these women. I don't see it like that. And, uh, of course, I never met met him personally but what that body of work tells me is these are things that are happening around these are changes that yeah as a man that likes women it's gonna be noticeable and he's gonna photograph it mm -hmm. but not with any uh, intention of being um rude or like being disrespectful to them mm -hmm. but that's how i see it yeah i mean to me it just feels like as you said he was going around photographing every everything really and he wanted to dedicate a, a special collection and call it Women Are Beautiful. Okay. Maybe in his head, we don't know. I don't know. Maybe it was like because feminism is on the rise and he wanted to kind of like... Now is the time to show it. Celebrate mm -hmm. uh, women in mm -hmm. a way. It's like these are the real women. Because when you look at the photos, like a lot of these photos, like for example, look at this one. It's not objectifying. I don't feel like this woman is being sexualized in any way you know she's just i don't know it's like they're, she's protesting because they're holding signs mm -hmm. you know what i mean uh, i don't know what she's up to but you know i don't think you know, they're not necessarily uh not this one i wanted to go back to that one you know like this one it's it's like a powerful yeah. strong woman mm -hmm. it's like what what's up you know it's like you know what this i mean my street yeah, it's like, why are you taking a photo? And it's kind of like the contrast with the, that mobster dude that I talked about in the, in the thing. I mean, I would say that if he, if he made another book and said men are whatever, and made a second collection, mm -hmm. maybe the message would have been clearer on the cover, at least. Because when you hear the statement, women are beautiful, you immediately think that it's going to be um objectifying in a way or another but like for example this is one of the, to me at least one of the photos that stood out the most in the in the documentary they also talk about this one this one yeah um that was actually that's the cover of the book i believe yeah and so to me this is one of like the ones that sticks out like th that got stuck in my head and i don't know it could be either or but it's just the i mean we agree women are beautiful you know women are beautiful creatures buildings are beautiful as well you like know I mean? you know like it doesn't yeah mm. i i don't particularly subscribe to the idea that just saying something is beautiful is objectifying that thing yeah so i don't know i kind of dig it but i understand the backlash yeah of course and it was a tumultuous time and things were changing the people were thinking was changing i understand that it kind of became a subject matter for so to speak now, this one, this collection, is something I can dig for sure. <laughs> I love taking photos in airports. Unfortunately, I don't travel as much. Mm -hmm. But uh, basically, Gary was traveling all the time for different jobs and stuff like that. Because he was also working as a, a 
Claro. Yeah, we didn't talk about that a bit about his like not so compli complacent view on working as a photojournalist and working for assignments for uh, magazines like Life magazine or I think he also worked from Eros magazine and some other. He ones. had to make a living somehow, which he barely did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's, he's out every day on the street taking photos. He right? doesn't have time to take jobs, and he, 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 he didn't like it so much. No, he did not like working for for the magazines. Uh, he had the opinion that they were very rigged, that they could only do or would get published wherever the editors wanted, which is a, a lot of photographers that we already talked about also kind of had that vision and moved away from working in those collaborations because they didn't see their artistic views supported by these magazines. And Gary also felt that way, even though he did get several Guggenheim fellowships uh, that were applied with the idea of doing incredibly important work that also could be put in the terms of being shared with the world in more broader terms and not just in an art gallery, but more as a sociological or social sciences view of what's happening around, you know, like even though his style is not purely documentary or he wasn't there photographing events that were hap that you know they they need the photos the next day you know to publish an article about it but still i think his work could have been used in some sense for some uh, more like investigative uh, journalism i agree uh, especially a lot of the st stuff that are public relations style. yeah for example i think those are a lot more like way more interesting photos than Oh, or for example, I mean, you know, the ones for the women and the ones of like the revolutionary hippies of the 70s, like, you know, articles about how is our life changing in America? What does it mean to be living in the 70s? Those kind of articles would be perfect for that kind of photography. I agree. I have to say, though, like airports, you can see here from the example, mm -hmm. examples that we looked at are a goldmine for rhythm, if that's <laughs> a style that you're into. Uh, there's one called the Eisenhower Years. We know our early work shows a radical departure from the style of documentary photographers and attached to persons or outcomes. The artist takes pleasure in simply observing the human dramas and absurdities that play out in the public spaces. So I think this is probably also apart from maybe included in the public relations. I'm not sure. Those are so cool. And this one is so cool indeed. These ones I had not seen. I don't think they show any of that in the I mean, they can't, they can't show all of it. I mean, CM did the math earlier. Yeah, right. <laughs> 27,000 <laughs> rolls. 27 and 777 rolls. That's a nice 27,000 and 777. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. He also took the very, very popular photo of Marilyn Monroe, or one of them, with the white dress over the subway event. Really? Yeah. I had no idea. Were you going to wait for the episode to end to tell me that? No, sorry. I, I thought you <laughs> you saw it or... I don't know. It maybe it wasn't on the documentary. I I think so. I, I do I know on. how to write Marilyn? I think I wrote it wrong. This one? Yep. Aha. Uh -huh. I had no idea. That's, it, that's if there's a couple of iconic photographs, <laughs> that's one of them. I had no idea. That he photographed her. Well, now I know. Yep. Yeah, I never knew who took this photo. Oh, this is one of the ones that I really liked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? It's so funny. You're so funny. It's like, what is she doing here? Keeping like, uh, you know, a uh, uh, guard? He, yeah, he's guard. He's guard. Uh, she's guarding. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I really like that both of them are looking at him. Yeah. One I wonder of those if times. you can see the reflection. No. I think, no? No, I can't see it at least. Um, this one's so cool. Yeah, I wonder what that is, like a big balloon. I think so. Or like a ball, kind of, so to speak. And here, when he moved to LA, basically, mm -hmm. uh, he, you, in, in LA is different than in New York, apparently, because <laughs> I've never been, but I can only guess that New York is a more of a walking city. The and subway a lot of public transportation, is famous. Yeah. You know that they have a subway. I don't think they have a subway in LA. No, they do have, but nobody really uses. It's not that co like it doesn't cover the same amount. Uh, the thing is that LA 
it's not just LA downtown. Yeah. LA is Hollywood, is Santa Monica, is uh, Newport Beach. It's like all this very very stretched out area where everyone kind of mingles with everyone, and you are within like twenty thirty minutes uh, drive and. Life is much more spread out in LA than it is in New York, where you have like Manhattan and the boroughs, and you go here, um, and everything is so much more fervescent in the New in New York. Mm. You know, like you have uh, so many cars and so many taxis, and so you, they need to find a way to move. That is easier. LA is like, even though in rush hours there's a lot of cars and stuff, it's like more chill life kind of thing so it's more spread out and you move a, a lot so people drive more yeah people it's drive more all common the time. to drive it's around it's not very common to go places walking or take a subway and then walk and then when i was there some places it's even difficult to find a walkable side road especially in some areas of course downtown is fine but some other areas might be hard you don't find crossing paths so often you might have to walk like half a kilometer to find a place to cross a road or something like that Crazy. and also um public transportation <laughs> has a little bit of a stigma mm -hmm. so there is a lot of like uh, people with mental problems that use the public transportation and people with less means and stuff like that so people that have just a little bit of money they get cars i see so it kind of feeds itself but it's very, very, very different cultures in New York and L.A. The, uh, so because what we learned yesterday is that he took a lot of photos uh, in the car. I love this one, by the way. Here, it's a ferry instead, mm -hmm. but uh, it's really cool. Uh, I'm not seeing a lot of them here in this collection, whoever curated this collection. This one is super cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, what happens to, the, to this guy's glasses? <laughs> yeah. I I've been know. wondering this since yesterday. <laughs> Uh, did he have an accident with this guy? Did this guy just walk through them? I, I think that guy is kind of like, like a, a popular... Is that either a teacher or someone famous and they're getting things signed? Does he say something? Uh, oh, it's a park. I thought it was a school. Yeah, so I think it might be a, f a football player or something. Um, yeah, th he did take a lot of photos uh, from a car, but unfortunately we can't see... A lot of bodybuilding yeah. people like we saw yesterday. Yeah, we it was. I think it's in uh, near the beach. There were a lot of like these outdoor gyms, and yeah. he just walked around and got a lot of. It's photos. it's common, I think, outdoor gyms uh, in uh, hot weather. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's something you see around New York. No, <laughs> there's no space for that. So you you attached a bunch of different articles. I mean, he shot color too. So yeah, far, we so haven't seen a single. No, we color have photo. not. So that's what I selected two different sites to check out his color work. This one has uh, photos. Mm -hmm. So, and we can read a little bit about them on the side if we want. Um, he shot a whooping amount of. Um, mm -mm, I think I wrote this somewhere. It looks like slide, this one. Yeah. So, uh, all the color that he took was slide. Okay. And uh, maybe I didn't actually, but like he had like, I think 35,000 slides somewhere. I think it's in one of the trust funds or in one of the places that are taking care of all the material from his life as a photographer. So a lot of slides as well. I mean, can I say how much I love the skin tones on these? And the reds. Look. Yeah. They're so cool. I think it's because of the reds. Definitely. Yeah, look at the reds. So deep. Yeah. It's a... Uh, he took much more black and white color. I think it was easier for him to just develop. You know, you don't have to send it anywhere. No. And you can it's work with it directly. Well. Yeah, also and when expensive. you shoot that much, it, uh, it and piles up. And for a not very prolific in terms of money photographer, <laughs> shooting black and white was always more economic. Right. Oh, look at all that relish. Yeah. <laughs> and all th those reds is just so nice. Right? I mean... This one's really cool. I think I can edit film like to this? look like this. Yeah. I got to keep a note of this. I'm saving this photo, uh, this page to use it as a reference. This one I really like. This one? Yeah, the colors is just so cool. It's so cool. I think I I like how uh, Joel kind of picked up where he, he left, left off. He left off kind of, yeah. Um, this one is... Because <laughs> this one, it, like, if I had no idea, I, if I had to guess... But is it because it's it's because it's color, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if I, if I had to guess who this is, I would say Joel Meyerowitz. Mm -hmm. Even though it's not very like, 
Magellowitzi? Yeah, I feel like uh, Joel would have something like maybe different for me to nail, like to be 100% mm -hmm. sure that it's a Joel photo. But the colors are, that's those are the colors. And then there's another article I pull up because I think it's very interesting to see how they actually show the color photographs on, on a exhibition, actually. Um, because these are slides, obviously. You can... In principle, may also print of slides, mm -hmm. uh, but no, they were actually shown on projectors, and I don't remember if I've been recently to an exhibition where the photos are actually projected, unless it's an audiovisual type of show, mm -hmm. obviously, but not like photographs. Yeah, usually prints are more more common. Yeah, which is weird now that I'm thinking about it. Right, because digital, you could do both. Right. I mean, everybody at some point is digitizing, even if they're shooting film. Yeah. They're digitizing to print, I guess. If you're going to print big, you're digitizing first. Yeah. If you're making smaller prints, then you can do dark room prints. You can also make bigger prints, but you're most likely digiti digitizing them first. Nowadays, nowadays for sure. But I'm sure, like, I think... CM is saying, is it Kodachrome? Yeah, we believe it's Kodachrome. Most probably so, yeah. is Kodachrome, yes. Um, let's see so there is more photos in the bottom if you want to watch uh, I I searched this page for Kodak nothing came up uh, I couldn't find any references yeah, but the colors do look like Kodak, Kodak. Kodak yeah so this is nice because you, you see that there's a photo of like the one from the couple but he also had another camera with him loaded mm. with but slide. this slide is not pretty no, because it's super underexposed. <laughs> I I guess yeah, you can tell there from yeah, the, sky. the sky. The skin tones are horrible, <laughs> but these are beautiful. Mm -hmm. These are so this good. This is so nice. This one is so beautiful. I like what's yeah, going on there, kind of with, with the dress. Yeah. And this one we saw it in the in the documentary. In the documentary, which is like. Cine still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is 7,000 likes on Instagram. <laughs> um, I like his... Yeah, I noticed something in his color when he's shooting color or at least some of the photos that he shared. Um, there was more of this kind of thing where it's like more abstract-ish. Mm -hmm. There was a few photos of the people being on the bus mm -hmm. where it's kind of like cropped in a way that nothing is clear mm -hmm. what you're looking at it just looks beautiful together now that's a photo from yesterday that from the documentary and i was thinking it was chet baker uh, yeah but i don't know if it says anything does there. it let's see so. i can uh chet yeah oh, chet uh, baker yeah i guessed it you did but it's a very young chet baker right yeah. i mean i know that face yeah that i'm assuming this is chet baker i mean yeah the eyes yeah but how, it's weird that they wrote it over you here. can you can read a little bit maybe what it says yeah i mean he says he he there is a recognizable celebrity subject such as chet baker or uh i mean i could have done this see if they mentioned it more than once yeah there yeah that's the only one though no oh okay and that's the only chat that's a part of a different world <laughs> anyways this one is so it cool it sounds very very cool these colors are so beautiful it makes me sad every time i look at photos with Kodachrome. <laughs> it makes me really upset but again i should be motivated because Try to get you that know look. i think we agreed that it's fine to do whatever you want with your pictures I wonder, sure. I wonder what happens if I if I match these colors and then I post like on social media, hashtag Kodachrome. Am I going to make a buzz and people are going to be like, what? How? <laughs> Where did you get <laughs> it? How, How did you develop it? Oh, it's, a good, it's a cool experiment. You can put Kodachrome is back. Yeah. For all of you who are watching, <laughs> don't say anything to anybody. It's between us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think that's should be it i'm actually uh, happy that your camera didn't shut off yeah so i'm trying not to push it do you want to do you want to uh, update on the battery what's happening life? with you <laughs> with your i don't know sometimes i start getting fidgety and i start playing with my stuff for no reason whatsoever <laughs> do you want me to 
Oh, Watch. CM says I shot Kodachrome when I was a teen. Dude. Nice. Uh, are you, do you have the photos? If you have the photos, Show share us. them. Show us. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, you know that I'm so looking forward that we go to my parents and to look through the photos because I know my dad shot a lot of slide and I don't know what it is. Yeah. And I'm really hoping it's Kodachrome. Here's the thing, CM. If you want, if you're interested, uh, if you are... If you find some of the photos that you shot uh, when you were younger and you feel like they're that you're happy with them and you want to share them, uh, maybe we'll start next episode uh, showing off some of your photos, <laughs> Kodachrome photos. If you're interested, DM us. Kodachrome. Uh, yeah, it would be nice. Yeah, it would be cool. To see one of our own using Kodachrome. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. Do you want um, me to update on something? Oh, I was going to tell you that you're more than... 25 percent still on the battery oh nice because yeah so usually we have like these big batteries to last us through the show but we got a new camera and we're so happy with it it's so nice uh <laughs> i mean we we barely prepared today before the show but like uh, in the setup because we couldn't check the feed because i was using the computer to edit uh so we plugged it in and just whatever we did with the lights and stuff but i think uh uh, I don't know. Let us know in the comments if you're watching later or whatever. If it's Doesn't noticeable, it if it yeah. looks better than last week, um, because uh, well, CM is saying I don't know where they are. And well, if they ever come up, we're always uh, interested to take a look. If you want to share us, mm -hmm. uh, share them with us. Um, yeah. So we got a super massive upgrade on Eva's camera. Uh, so the, before we talked about it, I get the nice camera with the questionable lens and she got the worst camera for video with a better lens well now actually you're hogging the whole thing you have the better lens and a better camera better video camera i'm so so happy about it we got the gh5s and it's so nice to work with for video uh and i'm looking forward to do more stuff uh but yeah first i gotta edit the ones that we already shot please <laughs> I mean, I can't complain. We got work, so yeah, that's true. That's sure. why we didn't. I didn't edit yet. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was exciting. It was really nice to uh, to work on uh, some video that is not for the channel. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it was a mini, a mini video. Mini video. It's good. It's but it was good. It was a good start uh, to jump back in the game. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I think that's it for today. Is there any anything else that we want to talk about? There is no news. I don't think we there already, is any news. We already said some of the little news on yeah. the topic. Yeah, that's about it. We hope you enjoyed the show. Mm -hmm. We hope you're having a lovely week. And it continues to be up until we see you next Tuesday. And remember, next week we're going to most probably announce the winner of the contest. And hopefully, hopefully have them with us. Yeah. That would be great. So we can talk a little bit about the, the photo. <laughs> I guess we uh, we shoot them up a message now. and uh, Yeah, to the admin and, so we get to know them, who it is. Tell them that you won. We need to know who it is first. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, we know yeah. who the, it is and see if they want to come on the show. Please, please do. <laughs> <laughs> if you're watching uh, and you don't know what you who you are. Anyways. Mm-hmm. Thank you for watching, guys. Thank you so much, and guys. Uh, take care. See you next, next Tuesday. Week. Next Tuesday. Yes. yes. Bye. Bye.